So this is it. This is the last step for the machine project. Um, and you know, you've made it this far and you've been doing great work, but, um, and so, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you need to do here, but I'm not going to give you too many hints because this is, you know, a place where there's not a lot of code to write, but you've got to modify a few different things. Um, and this is a chance for you to practice what you've learned. So, you know, on some level, what we're asking you to do is, is uh, straightforward. We want you to display as part of the restaurant activity the number of restaurants that a particular uh, restaurant is connected to using the definition that we used as part of the related restaurants and also the most related restaurant, which is the first one in that list that you created. So if you uh, have passed the previous two checkpoints, you have a method called get related in order that returns a list of restaurants. What you need to do in related restaurant, sorry, in your restaurant activity is call that method and display the name of the restaurant that appears first. If there are no related restaurants, you should display a blank string. So that's important. Um, the second thing is you're going to call the get connected to method. That's going to return a set and you want to display the size of that set. So the number of items in it. So, you know, you've done a lot of the work already. There isn't a lot of complicated imperative code to write for this particular checkpoint. The trick is figuring out how do you create an instance of related restaurants? So in the test suite, we've been feeding the restaurant list and the preferences list in for you. As part of the MP in your app, you're going to have to do a little bit of work here. So let me point out a few things. The first thing is that if we go look at the client, get preferences is actually never called anywhere in your code. This is a problem because your client now needs the list of preferences that it retrieves from the server. So you're going to have to call this method. Okay, you're going to have to call it somewhere, right? Um, we will start, when we run the tests, we will always run your main activity first, even if we're going to check the contents of the restaurant activity. So it's possible for you to put that in here. This is where get restaurants gets called, right? Is in the main activity. So it's, it is possible for you to put your call to get preferences somewhere in here. Now, the second thing you're gonna have to do in your client is that once you have a copy of both the list of restaurants and the list of preferences, you need to build that related restaurants object. So we have a constructor that takes a list of restaurants and a list of preferences. Once you have both of those, you need to create the related references object, put it in here somewhere so that you can get at it in your restaurant activity because your restaurant activity, you know, if you've completed this up to this point, you already have a reference to the client. And so the idea is you can add some helper methods on the client that allow you to call the methods on the related restaurant activity that you create in your client. So that's my suggestion of how to do it. There are probably other ways. The one tricky thing here is the order in which get restaurants to get preferences get called. So if get restaurants gets called first or completes first and get preferences complete second, then get preferences is where you want to create the related restaurants object. If that doesn't happen, then you need to be careful about where that's done. Because when you create that related preferences, uh, sorry, the related restaurants object, you need to make sure that you have a complete list of restaurants and a complete list of preferences. If you initialize the object with either a null list or an empty list or an incomplete list, it won't work. So that's something to think about. And that might be something that, that uh, causes you to think about how this code works. So remember, the callback in here only completes once get restaurants finishes. So essentially it makes the call to the server, retrieves the restaurants, then the callback runs. There's no reason why you can't call get preferences in the callback. And that'll ensure that get preferences always completes after get restaurants. So the call to get restaurants is the first thing the main activity does. That call completes, retrieves the data from the server. Then you make the second call to get preferences to get that information. And at that point, you should have a list of restaurants and a list of preferences and be able to build that related restaurants object properly so that you can use it in a restaurant activity. Once you do that, you know, this is sort of a mix up or a mashup of stuff that we've done previously. You're going to need to add some components to your view and uh, make those calls and, you know, put the data in in the appropriate spots. Once you've done that, you're done with the MP. Congratulations. You guys have done a lot of work this semester on this. Um, and hopefully this is sort of like the, the, last, uh, the last bit to do. As always, when you need help, if you need help, uh, we're available on the forum on the help site. Uh, good luck.